what is your advice regarding what all areas mid slash senior experienced software engineers should learn and know other than programming language expertise? Yeah, good question. Um, let's go back to this point that a number of a number of points um a couple of points actually specifically uh Jens and i've sort of sort of said yeah there's the language and then there's a thing outside <laughs> there's the people outside there's the community there's the, there's the stuff there but i've also referred to ecosystems um and the things around the languages so therefore it is understanding programming language expertise the programming language that you are working in if that the primary language is c plus plus then obviously having skills in that and improving your skills in that that's great. But also, what are the secondary languages that you use? Pay attention to those. We have a real habit, particularly in environments where we're not naturally using lots of languages, to treat these secondary languages as somehow very secondary. Um, give them a bit of space. You'll be surprised. Um, you know, we mentioned Python. I, I kind of turn up sometimes to C++ places, <laughs> say, okay, what, what's everybody's second language? Hands go up. It's Python. It's kind of everybody's favorite second language. But only a few people really have grasped it and fully understood it. And they would probably write far better Python code and even better C++ code. I know one place back when C, after C++11 was introduced, that their goal was to send people on Python courses so they would write better C++11. That idea is so even within the programming language space, that idea of work with something else and get good at those other things that you think are the edge of what you do, bring them into the center. But again, that's still not the whole picture beyond programming language expertise. Understand things about um, architecture. We are very, it's very easy to get drawn into the syntax and the current class you're working on or the current cluster of classes. What about the bigger picture? What about the nature of change with time? Um, code analytics, things like that. Um, uh, uh, Adam Tornhill's book, Your Code is a Crime Scene, where you're really trying to understand the system. How does the system of code behave over time? In other words, who works on it? What things change together? This is a far deeper approach. You know, it, it's, uh, it's the difference between looking out of your window and working out the weather and what you should wear when you go out the front door versus having a high level view of watching the weather patterns moving across your region of the country or the world and recognizing, oh yeah, it's all connected. So a bigger architectural view, I think, uh, and there's a lot to software architecture. So I would definitely say that is an area, particularly if, you're, if your job as a senior, that is one of the things you want to offer people is not simply, I know more stuff about the language, but I also see where it fits and you're, you're offering a larger view. But in other cases, um, the, the learning can be kind of, you know, so, and I can sort of say there's a lot of tooling kind of stuff and probably learns things that are outside your, you know, programming language you're not using and not even as a secondary language, go and have a look at it if it's different. I think there's a lot to be, there's a lot to be learned and enjoyed um, in doing this. Uh, and the same for other tools. And Maybe you're excited by AI, but you're not working in it. Sure, that's fine. Go and work with it. Maybe you seem to think that AI is the whole universe and you are working in it. Well, go and look at something that's not that. You know, go and look at something else to give you a different perspective. But I think the thing that gives us the biggest perspective is the, the, the learn bit. I mean, people always call them soft skills. And there's a question of whether that is the right term. It seems to downgrade them a bit. But for me, I'm, it's the idea of building on that software architecture thing the behavior of people creates the system. Mm -hmm. Software doesn't come by magic. It's, the, it's how people interact. And you can kind of spot software that is created. Uh, and you know there are development cultures and organizational cultures that are very good and encourage, they create the right environment for that. And then there are ones that don't. And even though the engineers might be individually brilliant, what comes out is problematic, complex, broken. There's all kinds of different failure modes. So I think understand the people side a little bit more. And certainly at the senior level, the way that you do that is by doing coaching. You're, you're senior, work with somebody who's not. Um, you know, Don't assume yeah. that they're going to pick up all your knowledge by osmosis simply because you're in the room. Don't assume that they need to follow necessarily the same path as you. Give them shortcuts. And they will also ask you questions that you will never have thought of because um, you have a historical, if you're senior, you have a historical way of learning, and it's very tempting to teach other people according to your history, whereas people coming into things now, it's just like, they don't need most of that, but
but they may also see it from a different perspective. They may ask a question that initially seems dumb, but is surprisingly hard to answer and gives you an insight. So yeah, I, it's it's very much that. Put yourself in a position where you are mentoring and coaching um, somebody else. You will learn a huge amount.